Okay. Spell words again. I do want to say that I got gifted this little book. Is it the right way for you guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And of course, for me, it's backwards. So, <laughs> I have I have bought a lot of spell books. I love looking at what other people are doing. I never really use them. It's like ideas, but this book was the most to the point, really like comprehensive. I agreed with everything she said, which is so rare. And it was all just very like to the point. It wasn't drawn out forever. Oh my gosh! Now the part that is relevant for me only because I really like to see what people are saying is like this much of the book. This is all the introduction stuff and the, just the matter of fact stuff that I loved. The rest of this is all spells, example spells of everything you could imagine. Insane. I would, I could never do all this. I would never want to do all those spells, but for inspiration, I don't usually like promote other people's stuff, but it's awesome. Yes. Laura. Who's the author? Oh, Ambrosia. Hawthorne. Yeah. It's new from last year. So I always try to keep up on the new publishing stuff, but, and I, is she self-published even? Cause it's not from Llewellyn. Of course, Llewellyn I love, but, um, a oh, rock Ridge press. So I don't even know who they are, but awesome job getting her published. I think her book was really great. It's probably the only spell book I, I would recommend to people only because it's straight into the point. And right. she explains things so easily, so easily. So the words and coming up with things to say, there are tons and tons and hundreds of examples out there creating your own. There's nothing wrong with it. We've talked about rhyming in this chat, in this group before you can make your words rhyme or you can not make them rhyme, but just know that it has to feel real to you. So if you start off saying something that you wrote down and you tried to remember and it rhymes and you get halfway through it and you're like, crap, what was that word? What, what comes next after that? Just go with it. Remember the, remember the intention and speak the intention all the way through. You know, if you're just saying, protect my sister, if you're just saying, give my mom self-confidence and self-love, whatever it is, as long as you follow through with that the whole time, that is the energy that's going to flow out. And that's the most important thing from that. Okay. Do we have any questions thus far? <laughs> I feel like I'm going fast or there's a lot. I know there's a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. I'm excited. It's, it's a lot. Oh, so the, so the very end of this, this is how I always picture myself at the very end with the sitting part. Even when I blow out my candle, I swear the world seems brighter or more magical or things are glowing. I'm just in this like awe of the universe. Sit in your space for as long as you can and really feel what you've done. Imagine it coming to fruition, whatever it is. See the scenes playing out in your head whether it's you know for my sister it's that she never has to worry about double checking all her doors or you know changing her phone number changing her locks on her door always parking her car in her garage all these little crazy things because she was afraid somebody was going to get at her being alone at night in her house stuff like that so you imagine the opposite of course it's like She's free to come and go as she wants. She could sit outside at one in the morning and not be fearful of somebody driving by. Like I picture her in these very happy, uh, safe moments. And that's what you can just sit and sort of let resonate with you and then out into the world with it. So the more that you can uh, think about the scenes that are the effects of your magic, the better it is. Those things can start to play out. The universe can see what you're desiring in images, which is you know, the universe doesn't speak English or Chinese or Italian. It speaks emotion. So the more emotion that we can bring to it, the more that you can feel those moments with the people that you're looking for the, to help them or even for yourself, the more that you can feel for yourself, that end result of your spell, the better it's going to be. Okay. Now you have to pack up all your spell stuff. Depending on what you've brought, it could be a lot. <laughs> it could be melted candle wax and herbs spread out everywhere. Um, you could have brought, you know, a piece of a tree to burn or, I mean, the list goes on and on for as far as things you can bring to your spell. So I, I got out some of my spell stuff. I have a couple, it's new moon, of course. So my magic needs to go back to the earth. Um, my husband got COVID. I think most of you know that, but he got COVID and we both got COVID of course, <laughs> but we were better in like three days. And then three days after that, he got pneumonia and was in the hospital and it was like terrifying because they gave him a 50, 50 chance to live all of a sudden. It was like yesterday he was walking around fine. It was scary. We've never had this. I've never experienced that. 
Uh, so of course I did the one thing I know how to do. I went home and made a spell after I dropped him off at the ER. And I needed him to have the spell with him. Like something told me, get this in his room with him, have him. And I have to instruct him because he's not a witch, but he absolutely believes in my magic, <laughs> which is so cute. I love that. But inside of here, I put things that would also help with his lungs. So I've got sticks of cinnamon, which, you know, I buy bulk from Costco, like huge things of cinnamon. Um, this is red jasper stones, which are really good for the blood, the lungs. I can't get it out of here. There we go. That's just raw red jasper, just a stone that I had. Um, we have different rosemary plants. So this is really stuck in there. Um, that's the rosemary. And then I've got this pine because pine is protectant and it's also very healing. So rosemary is very healing. And these are all, all these things are associated with like the blood, the lungs, breathing, your airways, um, health protection. So I came home, I did a blessing and cleansing over everything. I spoke my intentions to it, ran to the hospital and made the nurses deliver it to his room. And I said, honey, every chance you get, I want you to put your nose in this and I want you to breathe it in. Like, this is my spell to heal you. You, you have to breathe it in though. So when you I wish I could have you guys smell this. <laughs> That'll be future Zooms, right? Um, you can smell the rosemary, the cinnamon, the pine, because there's sap inside of this pine cone that just still smells like a fresh pine tree and keeping it inside of the jar next to his bed so that he could open it up and breathe this air. Because when you're in the hospital, there's no open windows. They're not letting you go anywhere. You're, you're breathing reventilated air. You're breathing barely cleaned air, whatever. So this was really important to me. And this is, this is just a glass jar, probably from Amazon, that I hold other herbs in. I've got like my herbs stored up there that I dry from my garden. But this is, this is an example of what a spell looks like after you've done it. And this is how I've kept it. And of course, I didn't want to release the spell back to the earth too soon. Because <laughs> what if you got sick again? <laughs> this is like the worst. Um, so this has just been sitting on his bedside table since he came home from the hospital. We kept it open. He smelled it a couple times. And I asked him, I said, let me know when you think that it's okay to let this go. So what I'll do with um, the organic material in here, which is the pine cone, the rosemary, and the cinnamon, I will bury that in the earth and ask the earth to take it back and return the energy to where it came from. Because I pulled energy into this spell to heal my husband, and now I release it back out. The two jaspers, since it's new moon, I will be setting them out in the new moonlight and cleansing them and just asking them to return to their natural state, remember their purpose, and then I can use them again in the future should I need to. So this is one way to um, keep your spell items together, a jar, anything. I made this really fancy one for my mom <laughs> <laughs> and love her to death, but she never used it. Okay. Super fancy. It was for her. Uh, it was a it was a bath for self love. So I I made her a whole spell for it and put all the items together. Uh, I grow roses and things, so I've got roses and some other herbs in there, and then sea salt and lavender. Again, that I purchased off Amazon. Lavender. This little container is from Goodwill. I love Goodwill for glass containers. Goodwill is one of my favorite places. Um, I like the idea of reuse and reuse reduce and reuse. Did I say that the first time? <laughs> Anyways, she just returned this to me. I gave it to her like eight months ago. <laughs> She's like, I'm really sorry. I never did it. I'm like, that's okay. I'll just go return it to the earth. It'll be totally fine. So I wait until new moon to return my spells to the earth. Lastly, you're doing a really small spell. You've got little satchels. These are just little bags that have your stuff in them. This is not a performed spell yet. It's got a green candle. It's got a prosperity sheet in it. It's not important to see it. And it's got citrine, a little raw citrine, and then it's got um, gold flakes. So this would be a prosperity spell that would be like, I need some money this weekend. I'm gonna go outside and do this money spell real quick and buy a lottery ticket. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know, to bring, to bring things to you. And, the, and then once you've done the spell, you have it in this little satchel and you keep it somewhere. I put things on my altar a lot. Um, you can put it anywhere in your house. 
the money corner of the house is going to be when you walk in your front door all the way to the left in that corner, whatever corner that is, that is your money corner in your house. So I could set it there. Um, but this is just another example of what to put your stuff in when you're done with your spell items. So candle wax, um, the candles that I buy, these little chime candles, a lot of times they don't leave any wax behind. So they burn clean. Uh, the bigger ones, these guys, not so much. They're super duper messy, which makes for really pretty bottles when you melt them, but they're, all, they're messy. So they're gonna get on whatever cloth I'm burning on. Um, okay, so that was, that was what to do with your spell as you clean up. I think I went through everything. Um, yeah, I think I went through everything. Now you're gonna walk home happy and keep imagining. The best thing you can do after you've done your spell and like a day later, a week later, three weeks later, don't go back and question yourself on whether you did a good job, did it right. Um, just keep, keep the intent strong that it's good, that you did it, that it'll happen. And that helps the spell energy continue to radiate out. It's gonna radiate. So, you know, from my little containers, every time I looked at this, I was like, you know, keep my husband's lungs strong. He was filled with pneumonia and it was like terrifying. I was like, okay, this is your job is to keep my husband's lungs free of gunk or whatever. So that's what I would, that's what I would imagine is like his lungs clearing out always. Um, and even when he was in the hospital, it was very hard to think to myself, to not think bad thoughts, to not think, oh my God, I could lose him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You know, fear, fear, fear. Um, yeah. So keep thinking the, the result, keep thinking about the results and not the fear that it won't happen. That would probably be the, the last thing. The